The steel gate clanged shut behind me, the heavy bolt sliding into place with a dull thud. Another twelve-hour shift at Site K, another night guarding secrets that could shake the world. I adjusted the strap of my rifle, the familiar weight a comforting presence against my shoulder. Out here in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by miles of razor wire and concrete walls, routine was everything. Predictability was sanity. I'd been a soldier, seen my share of action overseas, but this felt different. Out there, the enemy was clear, the objectives defined. Here, the enemy was something else, something hidden, lurking in the shadows, whispered about in hushed tones by the guards during late night coffee breaks. Site K wasn't your average military base. This was a black site, a place where they took the things that went bump in the night and tried to figure out how to weaponize them. Or at least, that's what the rumors said. Officially, we were guarding a research facility. Unofficially, well, let's just say that some things are better left unsaid. My partner for tonight was Sarah, a sharp, no-nonsense woman with a background in intelligence. She was one of the few people here I trusted. Most of the other guards were grunts, ex-military types like me, just following orders and trying not to ask too many questions. But Sarah, she was different. She was always digging, always searching for answers, always pushing the boundaries of what we were allowed to know. Anything strange on your rounds? She asked, her voice low, her eyes scanning the perimeter monitors. Just the usual. I replied, my gaze sweeping across the sterile corridors and locked doors. Flickering lights in Sector C, that weird humming sound coming from the labs, the feeling that someone's watching you even when you're alone. Sarah nodded, a knowing look in her eyes. You ever get the feeling there's more going on here than they're telling us? She asked, her voice barely a whisper. I hesitated, then leaned closer my gaze darting towards the security cameras. More than rumors and late-night whispers, I asked, my voice as low as hers. She met my gaze, a hint of a smile playing on her lips. More than that, she replied, her voice barely audible. Something else. The hairs on the back of my neck prickled. I'd felt it too. A sense of unease, a feeling of being watched, that something dark and unseen lurked beneath the surface of this place. But I'd always pushed those thoughts away, telling myself it was just the isolation, the long hours, the weight of guarding secrets that could shatter the world. But Sarah, she seemed to see it too, to sense the darkness that was creeping in, slowly, insidiously, like a fog rolling in from the sea. We shared a look, a silent acknowledgement of the unspoken truth. Something was wrong at Site K. Something was changing. And we were about to find out just how deep the rabbit hole went. Curiosity, that double-edged sword, gnawed at me. Sarah and I both felt it. This wasn't just paranoia or cabin fever. Something was off at Site K. The whispers, the strange occurrences, the feeling of dread that permeated the air. It was all too much to ignore. We need to find out what's going on, Sarah said her voice low and determined. We owe it to ourselves, to the other guards, to whoever's trapped down there in those labs. I hesitated, aware of the risks. Poking around where we weren't supposed to could cost us our jobs, maybe even our lives. But the unease, the sense of a growing darkness, was too strong to ignore. All right, I said, my voice firming with each word. But we do this smart, we do this quiet, and we leave no trace. Sarah nodded, a grim smile playing on her lips. My kind of plan. We started small, paying closer attention during our rounds, noting anything out of place. A door left slightly ajar, a security camera offline for a few seconds too long, a faint scent of ozone clinging to the air near the restricted labs. It was like piecing together a puzzle, each small detail hinting at a larger, more sinister picture. One night, during a perimeter check, we found a loose panel in a ventilation shaft leading down into the restricted sectors. It was a risky move, but we had to see what was hidden beneath the surface of Site K. We disabled the security camera covering that section of the perimeter and slipped into the shaft, the cold metal grating biting into our hands. 
The air in the shaft was thick with dust and a strange metallic tang. We followed the winding tunnels, our flashlights cutting through the gloom, until we reached a grate that looked down into one of the labs. The lab was a hive of activity, scientists in white coats bustling around, their faces illuminated by the glow of monitors and complex equipment. But something about the scene felt off. The equipment hummed with an unnatural energy, the air crackled with static, and the whispers we had heard before seemed louder now, amplified by the close proximity. And then we saw it. In the center of the lab, surrounded by a ring of researchers, was a containment chamber. It was made of thick, reinforced glass, and inside, suspended in a swirling mist, was a shape. A dark, amorphous shape that shifted and pulsed, its edges blurring and reforming as if it were trying to break free from its confines. I felt a cold dread grip my heart. This wasn't science. This was something else. Something ancient. Something powerful. Something... evil. Sarah gasped beside me, her hand clutching my arm. What is that? She whispered, her voice trembling. I didn't have an answer. But as I watched the shape writhe and pulse within the chamber, I knew that whatever it was, it was something we weren't meant to see. Something that shouldn't exist in this world. Suddenly, one of the researchers turned, his gaze sweeping towards our hiding place. I felt my heart skip a beat. He couldn't see us in the darkness of the ventilation shaft, but he had sensed something. A presence, a disturbance in the air. We need to go, I whispered, urgency gripping my voice. We retreated back through the ventilation shaft, our hearts pounding. The image of the shape in the chamber seared into our minds. We sealed the panel behind us, leaving no trace of our intrusion. But the memory of what we had seen, the chilling realization of what was hidden beneath the surface of Site K, would haunt our dreams. We had uncovered a secret, a dangerous secret, and now we were trapped in a web of darkness, caught between the world we knew and a terrifying reality that was beginning to bleed through the cracks. Sleep became a distant memory. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw the shape in the chamber, its edges blurring, its darkness reaching out. The whispers, once faint and distant, seemed closer now, echoing in the corridors, slithering through the ventilation ducts, whispering in my ear when no one else was around. Sarah was affected too, her usually sharp wit dulled by a constant gnawing anxiety. We tried to talk about it, to rationalize what we had seen, but the words felt hollow, inadequate to describe the sense of dread that had settled over us. The strange occurrences at Site K intensified. Lights flickered more frequently, alarms triggered for no reason, equipment malfunctioned at random. The guards were on edge, their faces drawn, their eyes darting nervously at shadows and sounds. Rumors spread like wildfire through the ranks, whispers of a curse, of a haunting, of something dark and powerful that was slowly taking control of the compound. Then came the night of the first encounter. I was on patrol in Sector C, the area where the labs were located. The air was thick with that strange metallic tang, and the humming sound from the labs vibrated in my teeth. I paused outside a reinforced door marked Biohazard Containment the metal cold and slick beneath my gloved hand. Suddenly, the door burst open, flinging me back against the wall. A figure stumbled out, a scientist in a torn lab coat, his eyes wide with terror, his face contorted in a silent scream. He lunged at me, his hands outstretched, his fingers clawing wildly at my throat. I reacted instinctively, shoving him back with a force that sent him sprawling to the floor. But as I looked down at him, my blood ran cold, his face, once human, was now twisted and grotesque, his eyes glowing with an unnatural light, his mouth stretched wide in a silent, horrifying scream. He scrambled to his feet, his limbs contorting at unnatural angles, his body moving with a speed and agility that no human could possess. He lunged at me again, his claws raking across my arm, leaving behind a burning, searing pain. I stumbled back, my heart pounding in my chest fear gripping me like a vice. This wasn't a man, not anymore. This was something else, 
something monstrous, something possessed. Sarah appeared in the corridor, drawn by the commotion. She gasped at the sight of the creature, her hand flying to her weapon. But before she could react, the creature turned on her, its eyes burning with a cold, predatory light. We fought back, our training kicking in, our weapons firing blindly into the darkness. But the creature seemed impervious to pain, its body absorbing the bullets, its movements fluid and unpredictable. We were no match for its inhuman strength and speed. It lunged at Sarah, its claws slashing at her face. She screamed, falling back against the wall, her hand clutching a deep gash across her cheek. I fired again, my bullets finding their mark, but the creature shrugged off the impact, its focus solely on Sarah. I knew we had to escape to get help. We were outmatched, outgunned, and out of our minds with terror. Run! I shouted grabbing Sarah's arm and pulling her towards the nearest emergency exit. We sprinted down the corridor, the creature's shrieks echoing behind us, its footsteps pounding on the metal floor, getting closer, closer. We burst through the emergency exit, the alarm screaming, the cold night air stinging our lungs. We didn't stop running, not until we reached the main gate, the heavily armed guards staring at us with a mix of disbelief and fear. We stumbled through the security checkpoint, our bodies trembling, our minds reeling from the encounter. We had faced the darkness, and we had barely escaped with our lives. As the steel gate clanged shut behind us, sealing us off from the horrors within, we knew that Site K was no longer a place of secrets, of scientific ambition. It was a place of nightmares, a breeding ground for something monstrous, something that threatened to consume everything in its path. The medics patched us up, their faces tight with concern, but their eyes filled with a detached curiosity. They treated our wounds, but not the chilling fear that had burrowed deep into our bones. Stress reaction, the doctor said, his voice calm and reassuring. Perfectly normal after what you've been through. Just take a few days off, get some rest, and you'll be right as rain. He prescribed us some pills but they couldn't erase the images seared into our minds. The feeling that something evil had breached the walls of Site K, that the world we thought we knew was crumbling around us. The official explanation was a lab accident, a chemical leak that had caused temporary psychosis in one of the researchers. But Sarah and I knew better. We had seen the creature, felt its touch, witnessed its inhuman strength and speed. And we knew that the official story was a lie, a flimsy cover-up meant to hide the truth from the outside world. We weren't the only ones who knew. The whispers among the guards intensified, the rumors becoming more detailed, more chilling. Some spoke of missing personnel, of strange experiments being conducted in the lower levels, of ancient rituals and forbidden knowledge. Sarah, true to her nature, wouldn't let it go. She spent her days off scouring the compound's restricted database hacking into classified files, searching for answers. She found reports of strange energy readings, of personnel exhibiting unusual psychological symptoms, of Dr. Harlan's increasingly erratic behavior. He had become obsessed with his research, withdrawing into the labs, rarely seen outside his inner circle of scientists. I tried to distract myself, to focus on the routine, the predictability of my shifts. But the fear lingered, a constant gnawing presence. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching me, that the creature we had encountered was still lurking in the shadows, waiting for its chance to strike again. Then, one night, Sarah called me, her voice trembling with excitement and fear. I found something, she said, her voice barely a whisper. Something big. She had stumbled upon a hidden archive, a vault deep within the compound's restricted sectors, containing Dr. Harlan's personal research notes and journals. She had downloaded everything she could, risking her own safety to uncover the truth. We met in my apartment, the blinds drawn, the lights dimmed, the air thick with tension. We huddled over her laptop, the glow of the screen illuminating our faces, our eyes scanning the pages of Dr. Harlan's journal. His entries were a chilling mix of scientific observations philosophical musings, and cryptic pronouncements. 
He wrote of his obsession with harnessing the power of the unknown, of unlocking the secrets of the universe, of achieving a level of power that would make him a god among men. He had stumbled upon an ancient text, a grimoire filled with arcane symbols and forbidden rituals. He believed that he could use these rituals to summon and control a powerful entity, a being from another dimension, a force of pure energy and chaos. His early experiments had been promising. He had managed to create a portal, a rift in the fabric of reality, through which he had glimpsed the entity. But he had underestimated its power, its malevolence. It had begun to bleed through the portal, corrupting everything it touched, twisting the minds of those who came into contact with it. The creature we had encountered in Sector C was just the beginning. The entity was growing stronger, feeding on the fear and chaos it was creating. And Dr. Harlan, blinded by his ambition, was determined to control it, no matter the cost. We knew that we had to stop him, to warn someone, to find a way to banish the entity before it was too late. But we were just two guards, with no authority, no evidence, no way to convince anyone of the truth. We were trapped in a nightmare, caught in a web of secrets and lies, facing a threat that was beyond our comprehension. The weight of Dr. Harlan's journal pressed heavy in my hands, its pages filled with his chilling ambition and dangerous delusion. We knew we had to do something, but what? We were just guards, and going to the authorities with this kind of story would get us laughed out of the room, or worse, labeled as security risks and locked away. Our only option was Lieutenant Blake, our commanding officer. He was a tough, by-the-book soldier, but he was also a good man, a man of integrity. We hoped, prayed, that he would believe us, that he would see the danger for what it was. We arranged a meeting with him, our hearts pounding with a mix of fear and hope. We laid it all out, showed him the entries from Dr. Harlan's journal, described our encounter with the creature, detailed the strange occurrences plaguing the compound. He listened patiently, his face impassive, his eyes betraying nothing. When we finished, a heavy silence settled over the room. Lieutenant Blake leaned back in his chair, his gaze fixed on a point somewhere beyond us. He was a man used to making tough decisions, used to weighing risks and consequences, but this, this was something else entirely. This is serious, he said finally, his voice grave. If what you're saying is true, then we're dealing with something far beyond our pay grade. He paused, his gaze meeting mine, then Sarah's. I need proof, he said, his voice firm. Something concrete, something tangible. I can't go to higher command with just your word and a stolen journal. We knew he was right. We needed evidence. Something that would convince him. Something that would force him to act. But what? The entity was elusive, its manifestations unpredictable. We couldn't just point a camera at it and expect it to pose for a photo op. We have to get into the labs, Sarah said, her voice determined. We have to find something, anything that proves what's going on. It was a risky plan, bordering on suicidal. The labs were heavily guarded, and our unauthorized access to the restricted database had already raised red flags. But we didn't have a choice. We had to try. We spent the next few days planning our infiltration, studying the security protocols, mapping the layout of the labs, looking for any weaknesses we could exploit. The pressure was mounting, the tension growing with each passing hour. We knew that the entity was growing stronger, its influence spreading, and time was running out. Finally, we decided to make our move. It was a Friday night, the weekend shift change, a time when security was slightly more lax, the guards distracted by thoughts of their upcoming time off. We disabled the security cameras covering our route, our hearts pounding with a mix of fear and adrenaline. We knew that if we were caught, there would be no second chances. We made it to the labs, the air thick with the metallic tang, the humming sound vibrating in the walls. We found Dr. Harlan's lab, the door unlocked, a single light burning inside. We slipped inside our flashlights cutting through the gloom, our gazes sweeping across the array of equipment, the bubbling beakers, 
the charts and diagrams pinned to the walls. And then we saw him. Dr. Harlan stood in the center of the lab, his back to us, his white coat stained with what looked like blood. He was hunched over a table, his hands working feverishly, his muttering barely audible. We exchanged a look, a silent question passing between us. What was he doing? What had he become? He turned, his gaze meeting ours, his eyes glowing with an unnatural light, his face contorted in a twisted mockery of a smile. You shouldn't be here, he said, his voice a raspy whisper. You're interfering with my work. He stepped towards us, his movements slow and deliberate, his presence radiating a chilling aura of power. I'm close, he said, his voice low and intense, so close to unlocking its full potential. And you, you're going to help me. A chill ran down my spine. Dr. Harlan's eyes, usually sharp and focused, now held a feverish intensity, a manic glint that spoke of obsession bordering on madness. The metallic tang in the air, always present near the labs, was overpowering here, making my eyes water, my throat burn. Back away from us, doctor, Sarah said, her voice tight, her hand gripping her sidearm. We know what you're doing, and we won't let you get away with it. Harlan's smile widened, revealing teeth that seemed too sharp, too white. Get away with it? He chuckled, his voice raspy and unsettling. My dear Sarah, you don't understand. This is beyond getting away with anything. This is... transcendence. He gestured towards a large humming machine in the corner of the lab, its metal casing covered in wires and strange symbols that pulsed with an eerie glow. I've almost finished the amplifier, he said, his voice trembling with excitement. Soon I'll be able to control it completely, to harness its power, to reshape the world in my image. His words sent a shiver of dread through me. He was truly lost, consumed by his ambition, his sanity shattered by the darkness he had unleashed. Suddenly, the lights flickered, then died, plunging the lab into darkness. A wave of cold air washed over us, and the metallic tang in the air intensified, making it hard to breathe. The humming sound from the machine increased in pitch, becoming a high-pitched whine that vibrated in my skull. And then, the whispers began. They were closer now, louder, more menacing, swirling around us, slithering into our minds, whispering words of fear, of despair, of surrender. I felt Sarah's hand grip mine, her fingers cold and clammy. We were trapped in a nightmare, surrounded by unseen forces, our sanity crumbling under the onslaught. A dark shape emerged from the shadows, its edges blurring, its form shifting, its presence radiating a chilling cold. It was the entity, freed from its containment, its power amplified by Harlan's machine. It circled us, its whispers intensifying, its darkness threatening to consume us. Help me! Harlan screamed, his voice cracking with fear. It's out of control. I can't hold it back. He lunged toward the machine, his hands fumbling with the controls, his eyes wide with panic. But it was too late. The entity had taken hold, its power overwhelming, its darkness spreading like a virus. The lab erupted in chaos. Equipment exploded, sparks showering the room. The metal walls buckled and groaned as if under immense pressure. The whispers shrieked in triumph, their voices deafening, their power overwhelming. I grabbed Sarah's hand, pulling her towards the shattered remains of the lab door. We have to get out of here, I shouted, my voice barely audible over the roar of the entity. We stumbled through the darkness, the lab collapsing around us, the air thick with smoke and the stench of burning chemicals. We made it to the corridor, the screams of other researchers and guards echoing through the compound. The entity was loose, its power unleashed, its madness spreading. We saw Lieutenant Blake his face grim, his eyes filled with a terrible understanding. He had seen the truth, felt the touch of the darkness. He knew that Site K was lost, that the only hope was to contain the outbreak, to prevent the entity from spreading beyond the walls of the compound. We have to get to the control room, he shouted, his voice hoarse. We have to activate the lockdown protocols. It's our only chance. We fought our way through the chaos the entity's whispers pursuing us, the screams of the possessed echoing in our ears. We reached the control room, the door sealed. 
the guards inside barricaded against the horrors outside. We pounded on the door, our voices hoarse, our pleas desperate. Open up, it's us, we have to get inside. The door opened a crack, a wary eye peering out. Mark, Sarah, is that you? It's us, I shouted, let us in. The door swung open and we tumbled inside, collapsing onto the cold metal floor, our bodies trembling, our minds reeling. We were safe for now, but the entity was out there and the nightmare had just begun. The control room was a whirlwind of activity. Guards frantically relayed reports over crackling radios. Technicians fought to maintain the failing security systems. Alarms blared incessantly, a symphony of chaos. Outside, the screams of the possessed echoed through the corridors punctuated by the sickening thuds of bodies slamming against reinforced doors. Lieutenant Blake was a rock in the storm, his voice calm and steady as he issued orders, trying to establish a semblance of order amidst the pandemonium. He had activated the lockdown protocols, sealing off the affected sectors, but it was only a matter of time before the entity breached the remaining defenses. We can't contain it, a technician shouted, his face pale with fear his fingers trembling as he pointed to a monitor displaying the compound's internal network. It's... It's manipulating the systems, overriding the protocols. It's learning. Hope, already a fragile flicker, seemed to die in that moment. The entity wasn't just a mindless force of destruction. It was intelligent, adaptive, and it was using the compound's own technology against us. We huddled around a table, desperation heavy in the air frantically searching for a way out of this nightmare. Dr. Harlan's journal, clutched tightly in my hand, offered a glimmer of hope, a risky and untested solution. He had discovered a ritual, a method of banishing the entity back to the dimension from which it had come. But the ritual was complex, requiring specific artifacts and precise timing. And even if we could gather the necessary materials, there was no guarantee it would work. It's our only chance, Sarah said, her voice firm despite the tremor in her hands. We have to try. Lieutenant Blake nodded, his jaw set, his eyes hard with determination. All right, he said. We'll do it. Mark, Sarah, you're with me. We'll gather the artifacts. The rest of you, secure this room, hold the line as long as you can. He clapped a hand on my shoulder, his grip firm, his gaze unwavering. We're soldiers, he said. We do our duty, no matter the odds. We split up, racing through the chaos of the compound, each step a gamble, every encounter a potential death sentence. The entity's whispers pursued us, its presence growing stronger with every passing moment. We fought off possessed personnel, navigated crumbling corridors, and evaded security systems that were now working against us, controlled by the entity's growing power. We gathered the artifacts, a strange assortment of ancient relics and modern technology, a silver chalice engraved with arcane symbols, a vial of glowing liquid, a high-powered electromagnetic emitter. Each piece felt heavy, imbued with a strange energy that made my skin crawl. We made it back to the control room, battered and bruised, our nerves stretched to the breaking point. The guards inside were holding their ground, but the entity was closing in, its whispers deafening, its power threatening to overwhelm the last vestiges of resistance. We followed the ritual instructions in Harlan's journal, our hands trembling as we arranged the artifacts, our voices hoarse as we chanted the ancient words. The air crackled with energy, the lights flickered wildly, the metallic tang intensified, making it hard to breathe. And then, silence. The whispers ceased, the humming sound from the labs died away, the oppressive energy lifted. The control room was bathed in an eerie calm, the monitors flickering back to life, displaying normal readings. The screams outside had stopped, replaced by a chilling stillness. We looked at each other, a mixture of disbelief and relief on our faces. Had it worked? Had we banished the entity? Lieutenant Blake approached a monitor, his gaze scanning the security feeds. It's gone, he said, his voice soft, almost a whisper. The readings are normal. There's no sign of anything. We collapsed onto chairs, our bodies exhausted, our minds numb. We had survived, but the cost had been high. 
Many of our comrades possessed by the entity had been lost, their minds shattered, their bodies twisted into grotesque parodies of human form, and the compound itself was heavily damaged, its labs destroyed, its secrets exposed. The truth of what had happened at Site K would never be revealed to the outside world. The official story, a fabricated tale of a catastrophic equipment failure, would be disseminated to the media, the true horrors buried deep within classified reports. But for those of us who had witnessed the darkness, the memory would linger, a chilling reminder of the fragility of human ambition, the seductive allure of forbidden knowledge, and the terrible consequences of unleashing forces we cannot control. We had escaped the nightmare, but the shadows still clung to us, a constant presence in the corners of our minds. We had faced the abyss, and the abyss had gazed back, leaving an indelible mark on our souls.